All right, next up is topic nine, ecology regions review questions. It says base your answers to questions one to two on the diagram below and on your knowledge of biology. The diagram represents the energy and kilocalories available at different feeding levels in the food chain. First one, we have a picture of corn and it tells us that there are 5,000 kilocalories available. Next up, we have a cow, 100 kilocalories available. And finally, there's a person eating which has three kilocalories available. Explain why there is a different amount of energy represented at each level of this energy pyramid. So once again, you've got 5,000, 100, and finally three. The reason for that, remember energy is lost at each level due to, one reason is gonna be heat, right? Giving off heat. The other reason is gonna be for metabolism. Remember, a definition for metabolism is looking at all eight life functions. And we've referred to those throughout the year as the three R gents. So your three R gents is why, think about it, reproduction, respiration, regulation, all of those things use up energy. 90% of the energy right, that you consume is lost only approximately 10% of the energy is gonna be moving up to the next level. Also remember, you need a continuous input of energy from the sun. Because these plants, corn for example, is, go corn for example, is going to need sunlight in order to undergo photosynthesis. Complete the energy pyramid provided to the right. Sorry, by writing herbivore, plant, and carnivore. On the bottom, remember those are going to be plants, things like algae, grass, trees, bushes. After that, you've got herbivore. Herbivore are going to be the types of organisms that need to consume plants. And then finally, at the top, you're going to have a carnivore. Carnivore are organisms that eat other animals. A wolf, a fox. The diagram below represents a marine food web. The organisms represented by X are. Again, the big thing is which way are the arrowheads pointing? Remember, the arrowheads represent the energy flow in an ecosystem. Notice none of the arrowheads are pointing to X. Because of that, that means that it's at the bottom or the beginning of the food chain food web. The thing we're all the thing that's capable of taking the energy from the sun and converting it into a chemical energy of glucose, those are going to be producers. Remember, decomposers, they're responsible for breaking down dead organic material or recycling nutrients like nitrogen. Carnivores eat meat. A dolphin would be an example of that. Um, and then scavengers are things that another organism would say like a lion has killed a gazelle, scavengers will come and eat what's ever left over. A fruit fly is classified as a consumer. Remember, a consumer is going to have to eat food rather than a producer. Remember, producers can make food because it is unable to. So, a fruit fly is a consumer because it can't synthesize its own food. Remember, synthesize is just a fancy word for make. So, it cannot undergo photosynthesis. Looking at the next page, the bar graph below shows the number of species in four pond ecosystems. Based on this information, which one would be the most stable? Remember, in order to be stable, you need to have the most biodiversity. Looking at the graph here, you'll notice that C is the highest out of all of them. That means C has the most biodiversity because biodiversity refers to the number of different species. Six says, fungi are decomposers. Remember, decomposers are gonna recycle dead organic material, or sometimes they'll say recycle nutrients that play an important role in the maintenance of an ecosystem. The role of fungi is important because they. Correct answer choice here is going to be two. Break down materials that can then be used by other organisms. One says, synthesize energy-rich compounds that are directly used by producers. Now remember, producers are capable of synthesizing energy-rich compounds. They make their own food, so they don't rely on decomposers to do that. 
Um, they limit the number of plants that can perform photosynthesis. No, because a fungi is not going to be in the same niche as a plant. So there's not going to be any competition there. And then four says, are competitors of other consumers such as herbivores? No, typically fungi, again, they're going to recycle that dead organic material. And a herbivore is actually going to eat plants. The graph below represents some changes in the number of individuals in a particular population in a stable ecosystem over a period of time. Which salmon best describes the trend shown in this graph? Remember, this line here represents carrying capacity. Again, I do think it is useful to make sure you're annotating and writing all over your paper, crossing off the answers that you think are not correct. So here we have carrying capacity. You Note sometimes it's going to overshoot it a little bit and then go under and overshoot it and go under. And that's because in the spring, more organisms are going to be produced than can possibly survive. Winter comes, survival of the fittest, many are going to die, spring comes again, and it continues in this cycle. Best answer choice for this one is going to be number two. In a stable ecosystem, the number of individuals is usually maintained within a certain range. And that range, again, that's going to be carrying capacity. Eight, abandoned farmland that once grew corn is now covered in bushes. So it went from farmland to bushes and small trees. These observed changes resulted directly from going from grass to bushes and trees is going to be ecological succession. Remember, each environment makes it more suitable for the next type of organism to live there. Which statement best describes where competition occurs in the ecosystem? Remember, for competition to occur, two organisms are going to have to occupy the same niche. Remember, a niche is really just a fancy word for job or role. What is this organism eating in that ecosystem? The best answer choice here is going to be two, because it's noting that the deer and the rabbit are both eating grass from a field. Right? They're eating the same thing, and because of that, they are going to fight over those resources. Number 10, the diagram below represents a food web. Note a lot of those words, types of organisms, you're probably not familiar with. This is when a lot of times those arrows are going to be really important because they show you what organism is getting energy from another organism. Note the arrowheads are pointing in the direction of the energy flow. It says which population would, most immediate, would be most immediately affected by the removal of the lizard population? When I see lizard, what I immediately do is I go up to my picture and I find out where the lizard is. Once I've gone and I've identified the lizard, I see where the arrow is connecting to. Most immediately affected means which one is it directly connected to in the food chain. So I follow that arrow head back and what I find out is that the ant is the one that's most closely connected to it and because of that, most immediately affected.